Hey everybody, I'm back with an update for DD4 team building and suggestions. So, I have been working on a spreadsheet for this specific purpose to give us a better idea of how we can really build the best teams and see how they perform. And the best way to do that is by checking against other people who have already done it and see what they used and how effective it was. So this spreadsheet, I, I showed a version of this a few weeks ago when I made a video. Uh, it was the first version of it. And uh, I had a couple of errors in it um, with the characters that were used. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through that as I, uh, as I uh, run through this and just kind of show you how to use it. But the idea is that we track what teams the character the people were using, what characters they used, uh, how, how many attacks they used per node, and then try to highlight which ones did the best relative to others in the number of attacks per node and try to come to an idea of what works, what doesn't work, and what really doesn't work uh, to kind of give us a better idea of what we should or should not do when it comes to team building. So a lot of these people have actually completed their first run. So at the bottom here, I put in a little code that says, you know, if they've completed node uh, 15, then it shows complete. So a lot of these people that you're going to, uh, I'm going to talk about here have completed it, but not all of them. However, I wanted to capture, you know, my own runs as well as people who have gotten into cosmic or further. So I found that there were lots of people who were in global and then stuck at the cosmic wall. That's where I am currently. And the reason why is because there's an enormous amount of gear to take four characters to DD4. So the way it works is you need four characters per trait type. So global, cosmic city, and legendary. That means minimum you must have 16 G15 characters to get through DD4 completely. Um, when you're thinking about that in terms of building characters and which characters to choose, you really have to consider the cost to take them to G15. You have to consider where they are now. So obviously a G14 character is going to be cheaper to take to G15 than a G12 character who also needs all the orange gear for 13 and 14 along the way. Uh, you also need to think about, is this character going to be utilized outside DD4? And I think that's an important aspect, um, just to make sure that you're not building characters you won't use, right? So, for instance, like, if you're not planning on building Skilletary, then why would you want to bring Yelena to DD4 just because she's a cheap global skill character, right? If you're not going to use her for anything else, then, eh, you know, unless you got, like, Red Guardian built, maybe that would work and you can put the two of them together and do something with them. I don't know. But think about that, too, before you choose the characters. So I'm going to go over some of this and show you what characters I think were pivotal to the effectiveness of some of these runs and make some recommendations on top two or three characters for each each one of these ver uh, these uh, sets of nodes and uh, kind of show with data behind it why I think those are the important choices and showing you know where there's some wiggle room right especially with your fourth character for each for uh, each set of notes so um right off the bat we can see here anything in green is the best attack as far as fewest attacks per node okay so if if somebody one shot a node then they only did one attack that's what these numbers are so for node one uh glum here did it in one attack so a lot of people did it in one attack you can see all across the board here there's a lot of ones um Whereas in node two, he did it in two attacks, right? So did I, <laughs> not, to, not to slam him or anybody else. This is just strictly for data purposes and understanding. The, the two attacks isn't a bad thing, but it's not the best, right? So one is the best, uh, four is, is you know gonna be a little lower and anything above like seven is gonna be yellow and 14 is, is this orange and then anything over 21 is red, right? So that's the idea is to color key this so we can kind of look at it and visualize the data very easily and see what's effective and what isn't. Um, so if I look at his at his teams, he did one, two, and one, and he used Sinister, Ghost, Black Widow, Thanos, and Symbiote Spider-Man, right? So I did shorthand these names here, but I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, you should be able to figure out who they are. If there's any confusion, please just let me know. Uh, 
DM me in Discord and I'll uh, I'll update the names if we need to. Um, then when we go down here to Global, he's using Sinister Ghost, Black Widow, and uh, Sabretooth, which is the ST, right? I put Stat for Stature, or I spelled out her name if she is the one that's used in Global. A few people did use Stature. Uh, some people did buy into the Pimtech stuff and the Pimtech height. But, you know, it's, it's so he did one attack on four, which is really common. One to two is pretty much what it took. Global, it was one to three, maybe five here for a couple people. Um, not too bad. And then for node six, this is where there was a lot of variance. So some people were able to do it in like five hits. Some, you know, here's the guy that did it in 13. If we can scroll across here, we can see who did the best on node uh, six. And we can see it's actually Gekka who did Sinister Ghost, Emma, and Shield Trooper, right? So Emma, Sinister Ghost is an absolute dominant trio, right? But then throwing in Trooper is, you know, he's just kind of a filler, right? He doesn't take any mini uniques. So he's really, really cheap for the most part. He still costs orange gear, right? He still needs several pieces of orange gear. So he's going to be several hundred, you know, SBCs and a lot of catalysts. But at least he saves you on the minis, right? So that's a 1-1-1. One, one, one. He, he was able to one-shot the first six nodes, right? So he put a lot of mutant gear in here, and so that means he's probably going to be hurting for it later because um, Emma and Sinister are expensive. But if he's only going for Phoenix as his legendary mutant and then he's done with mutants, that's not so bad. You know, you want to try to get about three of each type and then four of one. Um, but if you go with two really expensive characters on one origin type, you're probably going to have to go with four of another origin type twice. So you got to keep that in mind, too. Um, other thing, you should shoot for just 16 characters, four of each type for your first run in order to save resources. Now, if you have an overwhelming amount of resources and you've you know, charted it out and you know that you have plenty of resources to take a 17th character, then uh, go right ahead. Um, but beware, you know, you don't want to get into a, a gear grind, right? And, and be stuck somewhere. So that's what I'm trying to show here is just, you know, who used what. Um, you can look at these different teams. Somebody brought Hawkeye. Um, I highlighted people that were taking different characters in red or unpopular characters in red. Um, it's not meant to be necessarily a bad thing or a red flag. It's just meant to be like, oh, look at this person. What did they do? Um, and then there were a couple that I thought were really interesting that are highlighted in green. I'll get to those when I get to those nodes. But for global, you can see most everybody was able to, to do global fairly quickly. However, I don't think anybody did. Uh, skipped sinister except for one person that brought or two people that brought emma instead of sinister and they did fairly well um you know for except for yeah 14 attacks on that third node that's not too bad though i mean you know that's that's two weeks of being on that node but you know in the long run if you're waiting a long time for cosmic and city gear it doesn't really matter right because you're going to have downtime at the end so early on that's not so bad um, but you can see here how some of these teams performed. Um, probably some of the better teams, obviously, are the ones that invested heavily in certain characters. However, you can see um, a lot of people brought Sinister and Ghost. And I think the cheapest team you can bring is Sinister, Ghost, Sabretooth, and then either Black Widow or Yelena. Um, you can see here uh, somebody did Yelena instead of Black Widow. They got one, two, and seven. Um, I did Black Widow and Sabretooth. I did one, two, and eight. Uh, this guy also did Black Widow and Sabretooth. They did one, three, nine. Um, you know, here's another one. Casino did uh, actually Sinister Ghost, Zemo, and Trooper, and he did one, one, seven, which is really good. That's only nine attacks overall. And then um, Murph here, he did Sinister Ghost, Black Widow, and Sabretooth, one, two, six. Not bad. Like you can see here, if you bring Sinister Ghost and a couple others you're probably going to do well so for global i think it's really really obvious that either you want to bring sinister or emma however sinister is one g15 piece cheaper than emma so she is a little bit more cheap and then if you can bring just black widow and saber tooth um they're very cheap upgrades and if you already have them at tier 14 which i did because i took both of them to uh dd4 or dd3 um it's a relatively cheap upgrade process. If you don't already have them at tier 14, then it may not be the best option because it's gonna cost you a lot of orange gear to take them through tier 13 and 14 potentially. So you have to look at that. You have to look at your roster and think, geez, you know, if I gotta spend, you know, 1500 SBCs just taking them to tier 14 alone, 
is it worth it to keep going to 15 then with them? I mean, it may not be. You may have better options, even if they cost a decent amount of uniques or mini uniques, then um, you got to think about that. Um, but here's a guy who did really well, Tenacious JD. He took Sinister Go Zemo and Stature. Unfortunately, Stature is Bio. And uh, when we get to City, you'll see why Bio is really important to save for City nodes. Uh, but for the most part, I think I think this really plots out. A lot of people brought Sinister and Ghost or Emma and Ghost, and, and it wasn't that bad. Um, the only person that had a really bad time in uh, Global was Philosopher. Um, he took Sinister Ghost, Black Widow, and Captain America. However, he was racing, and so a lot of his numbers are a little out of whack because they aren't what a normal person would do <laughs> so keep that in mind please uh if you look at his numbers all right so let's move on to cosmic and i think this is where the most controversy is you can see here there's a lot of people that had a bad time in cosmic um the best attacks that we saw in cosmic here for instance the first node the best best one was two attacks was the minimum um, that I've found so far as far as the tracking goes and what the Tahiti discord has shown in their uh, DD4 tracking channel. Uh, people are voluntarily providing this information. I'm picking it up and using it here. Uh, really appreciate that. It's a it's a great resource for somebody like me who wants to kind of overanalyze this and try to you know figure out what's the best to do and it really helps us in, in looking at the data from a high level and seeing what all other people did and, and so i really appreciate that resource from them if you want to go visit their discord there's there's a link here and i'll put it in the description as well uh, a link to this guide as well so uh, you can see here i think this is pretty much the staple team for cosmic is thanos proxima hella and minerva um this guy did it in 259 with that team. Uh, this guy did it 244 uh, with with that same team. 456, uh, really 15 attacks, you know, 10 attacks, uh, 16 attacks. Really not that bad, right? These are all these are all fairly reasonable amounts. Thanos, Proxima, Hela, Minerva here with 341. That's only eight attacks, which is really good by Green Pro. Um, you know, that's, it's a fairly common team from what I'm seeing that, that a lot of people are taking. Uh, 5, 5, 10 is 20 attacks. That's not terrible. Uh, let's see. And then uh, we'll get to some of these one-off teams. But that seems to be the general consensus. Thanos, Proxima, Hela, Minerva. But it's really Hela and Minerva that are driving that team and making it super successful. Um, in DD3, those two were staples. So if you used my guide for DD3, you probably know that I recommended both of them for DD3. And it's the same thing. The Greg Minerva uh, combination is awesome. If you can get double or even triple Gregs somehow in a node, it's just going to set the the tables in your favor so much and it makes such a huge difference and an impact on on your ability to move forward it really doesn't matter who the other two characters are all that much if you can get hell and minerva uh, but i want to show um, one person over here tenacious jdd did bring shatterstar and longshot and he did one of the best runs of cosmic where he did three two five uh, which is only 10 attacks total which is fantastic right so he, he tied Murph for 10 total attacks in Cosmic, and uh, and then Rain Pro did really well here with uh, 341 using that uh, Thanos Proxima Hella Minerva team. So either one of those could work. However, Shatterstar and Longshot is a lot of mutant gear, and so if you're planning on taking Sinister and Phoenix, uh, you're going to be hurting for mutant gear in the long run there if you do both of them. So I think those two are probably fairly important to one-shotting these nodes when it comes to run two but for run one it's going to be really hard to get both of them so i would recommend at least going for hella and minerva um, and then if you can get thanos and proxima but they aren't required um, so i want to show uh, down here we have a couple other options um, let's see uh, so one person brought thor instead of thanos that was yeti who did really well with him uh, he did 354, which is 12 total attacks, which is really fantastic. Um, he did have a very big Thor, though. I think he was six red stars, but still, that's uh, that's very good because other people who brought Thor had a very bad time. So just to show, um, like this guy, whale whale shit, <laughs> he did 12, 18, and 41, where he took Thor instead of Hela. Now Thor is one piece difference from Hela. He is a 72, 72 mini unique guy, whereas Hela is 90, 90. Now that's a really important distinction because 18 more pieces for a character that may save you, let's see, it goes from 
10 to 15 attacks, maybe 20 to 71 uh, for this guy. So now granted, maybe he wasn't playing that great, but that's a huge difference, right? Um, if you're if you're making it harder on yourself for one piece of gear, I don't think that's worth it. Uh, another person here brought Th Thanos, Proxima, Thor, and Longshot, and they took 94 attacks to get done with Cosmic. So they were they're trying to go without Shatterstar. Longshot's not very good. Um, yes, he does do still a lot of damage. He unfortunately won't get a whole lot of crits to get turn meter. He won't get that barrier. Um, there's a lot of benefits to having the two of them together uh, that you just don't get otherwise. Um, Philosopher did Thanos, Proxima, Minerva, and Longshot, and he did 9, 15, and 35. Um, you know, it's just, you can tell here that there's a big difference. Another person, Gekka, brought Thanos, Proxima, Minerva, and Mordo, and took, what, 50 attacks. That's a lot. Um, to bring Mordo, who's a 54-54 character, I believe, instead of 72-72 on uh, Thor, or 90-90 on Hela. And granted, that could work, but you got to think here. Mordo's not going to be as powerful. He's not going to be as useful. No Greg, right? Greg's turn meter rewind is absolutely phenomenal in Dark Dimension. All Dark Dimensions, not just four. <laughs> so you got to think about that. Another person brought Thanos, Minerva, Mordo, and Longshot, and they did, what, 33 attacks, which is a good amount. Uh, that's, that's a lot, um, but it's doable. But here's the thing I want to point out. All these teams, no matter what they're doing, and they're taking different characters, um, they're all still completing it eventually, right? None of these things are impossible. So no matter who you bring, you'll probably still make it through. It's just gonna take you longer. And the question is, do you wanna spend more time getting through these nodes with subpar characters, or at least subpar Dark Dimension 4 characters, or do you want to wait a little bit longer, get the resources you need, and then plow through it uh, fairly quickly and not spend weeks in these nodes and instead spend a week in these nodes? Uh, I think that's an important distinction. So for like somebody like myself, like I've said uh, on stream before, I've just been like, you know what? I'm going to wait out for better characters because I don't want to spend three weeks doing small attacks every day on nodes and barely chipping away at it, right? And just taking forever. I would rather wait for a better character, invest in them, like Hela, I love Hela, she's amazing. Um, I don't mind spending gear 15 stuff on her at all. Um, but to me, I'd rather do that than beat my head against the wall for three, four weeks with subpar characters that aren't really gonna do a whole lot, like a Mordo or a Thor. Um, so keep that in mind. Another one I wanna point out is He Hate Me brought Thanos, Proxima, Cull, and Longshot. And I hadn't seen anybody else bring Cull on their first run, but you know, doing it in 19 attacks is not so bad. Uh, if you have a lot of bio gear, you can do Cull. And uh, you just can't waste any bio gear up here in Global. And then uh, it's gonna be hard to get those symbiotes for City. But that's that's kind of what I'm seeing. Is City, it seems to be the biggest bottle, or I'm sorry, Cosmic seems to be the biggest bottleneck, then City. Um, it seems, seems that way to me. Uh, global and non-trait nodes seem to be the easiest, and then uh, legendary is kind of medium. But you know, there's such a small pool of characters for legendary. I think everybody's taking mostly the same stuff. So let's go back over here. Let's move on to city. Um, so, but anyway, bottom line, Hella Minerva is an excellent combo to bring. They will make your life so much better. Proxima and Thanos are not absolutely required. I think Proxima is awesome as a skill character, and there are a whole lot of great skill characters to take. Uh, mine is seven red, so I'm taking her. I've already taken her to G15. I'm just waiting on Helen and Minerva gear to start Cosmic, but I think I think that she's a good choice. And then I don't think Thanos is a must-have, but if you got a seven red Thanos and he's already decked out at tier 14, I mean you might as well just take him to tier 15 anyway. He's gonna be badass in Arena for a while, so you might as well. Um, not an absolute necessity, but he is pretty awesome. So for City, what we're seeing is uh, some people are having some, I guess, success and not so much success depending on who they're taking. So in this case, a lot of people are taking Symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom and Scream, and then the fourth could be Merc LT, it could be Punisher, it could be Vulture, um, just whatever city character is relatively cheap for you to get depending on what kind of gear you have available. Uh, but you can see here, uh, Glum was able to do it in 14 attacks. Uh, Casino here with the standard SSM, AV, Scream and Punisher did it in 12. Um, I'm seeing this a lot. The first two nodes are basically one to two attacks. Um, 
look at this one one nineteen that's twenty one attacks um, to do this but all uh, but most of them are on the last note so the last note is really tough it is very very uh, tough it's got a lot of attacks in it but let's point out some of the uh, people who didn't do so well <laughs> the dashui here he took SSM uh, Scream, Merc LT, and Punisher, and he spent 33 attacks on this instead of, say, like 20 ish, uh, which a lot of people are doing about 20. Um, you know, maybe it's a lot cheaper because you won't have to spend as much on bio, uh, but remember, he did take stature up here, so he wasted a lot of his bio on a global character that maybe didn't need to be there, right? But if that's who he had, maybe he had a really big stature or seven red and he just wanted to use them. Uh, you know, that makes sense, I guess. But it's probably not the prudent choice, right? So MLT and Punisher is tech and skill. SSM and Scream are bio. And then, of course, uh, a lot of people are, um, you know, saving um, bio for Invisible Woman. Although you can see here he didn't because he was out of bio. So he went with Fury as his legendary. Uh, but those are the things that are going to happen when you make these decisions and you choose to overload on one trait versus another. So it looks to me like SSM, Scream, and AV is the trio to take to City and just use all your bio gear there, right? I know I've been collecting a lot of bio gear myself and I mean, and I'm passing on it in the War Store now because it's not as important for me. I'm trying to get the Cosmic first, so I'm spending all my War Credits on that. But I mean, SSM is an amazing character. Taking him to G15 is a no-brainer. Um, Anti-Venom is as well, and Scream is really good too. And she's cheap. She's 36 um, bio minis. So um, you got to think about all that and think, well, you know, maybe that is the cheapest way to get through City. And then just add in a fourth. So if you got an overload of tech gear, uh, go with Merc LT. If you got an overload of skill gear, go with Punisher, right? Um, you know, a person over here went with Vulture as their uh, tech guy for their fourth city person, and they were able to do it in 18 attacks, which is not bad, right? The person that did the best was actually the one that took the standard team here, SSM, AV, Scream, and Punisher for 11 attacks, which is very reasonable. Um, but look at that, nine attacks for the third node, that's the best that I've seen recorded. Um, so you gotta think, this is gonna be a while, even if you take a really good team. Now, granted, you come around on the second run and you add like Venom or, or Carnage, I guess Carnage would probably be the most important, but add them into this team and it should be fairly simple to one shot most of the stuff or at least, you know, two, three shot it. Um, now, cautionary tales, of course. Um, another person that brought SSM, this time AV, Anti-Venom, Merc LT and Punisher, they did it in 40 attacks, uh, Philosopher, also did that that group and he did it in 44 um, so that seems to be about what's going to happen if you bring uh, Merc LT and Punisher how this person did it in 33 so you know somewhere between 30 and 50 attacks if you bring MLT Punisher into symbiotes so something to think about the rest of it, everybody else did something similar um, one person brought Carnage as Gekka so SSM, Carnage, Scream and Punisher 1, 2, 18 so you're talking you know 21 attacks there that's, that's about what people are doing, whether they take AV or Carnage is not a big difference. I believe they cost the same, but, um, although don't quote me on that, I might be wrong. <laughs> I don't have the list in front of me. Um, but it's about the same as far as attacks, so if you prefer Carnage, maybe you got a bigger Carnage instead of AV, maybe that is more useful. I don't know. I personally would rather have the utility of Anti-Venom, just because he's... He's really good, and also for rating purposes and elsewhere in the game, Anti-Venom needs to stay alive, so him being G15 is more valuable to me than bringing Carnage to G15. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for City. Um, three symbiotes, pick your favorite three that are not too expensive. Venom's really expensive, so I wouldn't recommend bringing him first run at all. Um, I think he's also the easiest to drop out of symbiotes. Uh, but I think that makes a lot of sense. There may be some other cheaper... Uh, options for city i'm not aware of but punisher merc lt vulture are there oh and uh i did i forgot to point out one person did bring ghost rider and did it in 11 attacks nine attacks in this last node that was the best i'd seen um but ghost rider is mystic right and so he already went with hella and he did not bring thanos right so not bringing thanos meant he had the gear for ghost rider and now he's just got to save up for maw for legendary um but he was able to get through uh city very fairly quickly with this which is awesome so good for him <laughs> all right last one's legendary everybody that did legendary that i've seen so far brought maw phoenix and doc ock 
as their trio. So that's the base trio that you should bring from what I can tell. And getting through in, you know, 14 attacks or 18 attacks or, uh, let's see, 16, 13, you know, 15. Really the only difference I'm seeing is that some people brought Fury and one person brought Shuri. Now here's the interesting thing. The person that brought Shuri did the best out of anybody in Legendary overall with only 11 attacks. And now Shuri is also tech gear. So trying to get Ak and Shuri and probably a Minerva earlier uh, into DD4 at G15 is gonna be rough because they all cost a lot of tech gear. So you gotta be careful. Um, you don't wanna get yourself st stuck where you've spent all of one type of gear and then you get the legendary and realize, oh wait, I don't have any mystic for Maw and he's really important. So who else am I gonna take? Cause you only have a few characters to choose from. Um, so it's just kind of interesting to see. Uh, another person who brought Fury was it took uh, a few more attacks. It was 22, so that's a lot. But um, everybody did fairly decent. Uh, 20 attacks with uh, Fury here. Uh, so you can see a lot of people were able to do pretty well. And the standard team of Maw, Phoenix, Doc, and Invisible Woman is really popular because of the cheapness of them, right? So. I think Ma is 72 um, Mystic pieces, which is a lot. Phoenix is 54 uh, uh, Mutant pieces. Doc is also 54 Tech, and then Invisible Woman, I believe, is 54. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's right for all three of them. But they're all really important. So Phoenix, of course, for the damage, 20%. Um, drain, keeping everybody alive, docks the support with the regents and everything, and also the buff flips. Um, you know, calling in that summon is helpful because that's another target dummy for them to hit. Uh, Ma's offense down, his speed reduction, his slows, his defense up. I mean, he is just a beast. And then when you kill human or, or hero controllers, you know, he's going to give everybody barrier. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, really, the fourth character you bring beyond those three is just going to be up to you what's on your roster and what sort of gear you have. So you really got to plan this out. And so the other thing I want to show is just my like our roster organizer spreadsheet here. So for me to get into uh, or to finish, this is what I'm looking at. I need to collect. So I need another 60 Dragonite, another 67 pressurized tanks. Um, this is to finish out all the other characters. I don't have a G14. Uh, I need another 75 hyperphages, 90 spectral analysis. <laughs> I need another 92 essence, 84 geodes. Oh man, I'm really close to finishing Hella though. I only need one piece on her. And then I am, I'm doing Punisher as my fourth uh, city. So, you know, I need a bit more uh, skill because I just use all this to upgrade Proxima. Now I'm done with skill characters for the DD4. And then I need a little bit more uh, mutant gear to finish Phoenix. So uh, unless something changes, uh, I won't need much more mutant gear. And then I need a lot of superior basic catalysts. Um, so basically I'm buying those in the raid store every time I see them. Um, and, and hoping that I get some there. I'm also hoping I get some in occasional arena orbs that I open here and there, uh, as well as the orange orbs that you get from raids and everything. And then I also need a lot of damage catalysts and focus catalysts. So I'm buying those whenever I see them in the raid store because I get plenty of raid credits. Uh, when I get closer to a crunch on one of these, I may start buying them with war credits if I have to. But right now all all of my war credits are going towards um, mystic and tech gear for mini mini uniques because that's my current bottleneck for getting into cosmic. So once I'm done with that, then I'm going to reevaluate where I'm at and see, okay, well, I need to buy more mystic gear and a little bit more uh, bio gear to get into city, right? So I'm going to look at that and maybe also some skill here and there, but uh, we'll see how the drops go. So keep that in mind. The other thing is you can use your war credits to balance out your gear, right? So you get to choose what you buy with war credits. So, you know, when I see mutant mini uniques in war store for the last few weeks, I haven't been touching them. I just let them go, right? Because I only need a few left to finish Phoenix and I'm very far away from legendary. So there's no point in buying them. It's better to save those credits and then wait for the right drop on the store reset for the ones that you're really targeting right now that's in front of you. So for me, that's cosmic, that's tech, that's mystic gear. So that's all I'm buying from the war store right now. Once I get through cosmic, I'll reevaluate and start changing up that uh, purchase plan. But that's the idea is trying to figure out how much you need to finish where you're at now and, um, 
making sure that you know uh, what to focus on. So for instance, um, I don't need um, the molecules anymore. I just passed however many I need to finish Ock and Minerva, right? So that's really good for me to know. Because that means I don't need to spend gold on them. I don't need to necessarily spend raid credits on them either if I don't want to. And uh, I can focus that those those credits somewhere else or I could use even the gold store to buy things that I need if I can. Uh, like for instance, I buy every G15 mini unique I can find in the gold store and I refresh it six times a day for 50 cores each just because I'm trying so hard to get the gear I need to keep moving. Um, so as far as uh, that goes, that's all I'm doing. I am not spending a piece of orange gear right now on anyone that is not going to DD4. It is absolutely imperative that you do not waste any callus any orange gear at all on characters that are not going to dd4 and the reason why is because look right here all these spcs you know how long it's going to take me to get 4300 spcs to finish out my dd4 stuff it's going to be probably a couple of months and so every time i spend a few hundred spcs on some piece of gear for a character that's not going to dd4 it sets me back another week so you got to keep that in mind and be really disciplined about it. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been looking at my roster and saying, what characters do I want to take to tier 12? So I'm doing Axemen, I'm doing Pimtech, and uh, Wakanda people, just because, you know, I can take them all to tier 12, no problem, use just purple gear, level 60, 664, not a whole lot of gold there, but it's something to spend on each day and keep building. And the only reason why is because it just bolsters my Blitz teams. That's it that and if i ever want to take them up again in the future uh once i'm done with dd4 they'll be ready but for right now um that's what i'm looking at as far as what's important to me and what's going to help me get through the game faster and then finally finally be done with dd4 so i can start working on my entire roster the way i want to instead of being completely drilled in to what's going on in dd4 and how to finish it so that's where i am that's my roster build plan that's what I'm doing. You can see if you want um, my plans. This is in my roster spreadsheet, uh, which is a copy of the Groot tool from Zara Tools. There's links down below in the description if you want to copy your, your own and start using it. It's pretty awesome. It works with the roster extractor and Mantis, the tools that I've displayed on my channel recently. If you need help with them, let me know or go to their Discord and ask questions. Uh, there's plenty of helpful people out there. But this is this is my set of four for each mode uh, <laughs> and um it's just it's gonna be a while until i'm done with it but you can see i've already got some g15s um i'm actually at the point where i can say okay well if i click off these guys and i click off like say punisher and uh that and then i go look at my inventory uh let's see i'll be i, I can't i can't do both of them so if i wanted to i could look and see can i do anti-venom yes I have enough gear to do exactly what I need to get Anti-Venom up to G15 without hurting my ability to take characters to Cosmic, right? So if I uncheck those characters that I'm looking at for farming, it'll do the difference here and I'll be able to know exactly where uh, the, or how much gear is needed for each character, right? So the ones that are checked are active in the count and the ones that aren't are not. So that's, that's how this works, which is really neat. And so I know I can actually take Anti-Venom to G15 tonight and it's not going to impact my ability to get to cosmic because the gear that they overlap on is uh, I already have enough of it. So, but I can't do scream as well. So, doesn't matter. I don't even have the bio mini uniques for her yet. Anyway, so it's one or the other. But I think I'd rather have anti venom up to G15. So, we'll see. But uh, anyway, that's it. That's everything that I can think of as far as DD4 team building guide recommendations and everything. Uh, how to how to plan out, how to make sure that you got exactly what you need as far as gear goes, and then trying my best to show what works and what doesn't work in DD4 with data and statistics and real lot of people and how they've done. So if you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, you know, put it in the comments. Otherwise, just uh, DM me in Discord if you're interested or go on one of my channels and uh, at me and ask me in there. So, all right, guys, this is a long video. Sorry about that, but uh, I just want to cover 
everything I can think of. So that's it. That's it. I think I'm done with DD4 recommendation videos. I think that's it. Uh, hopefully I'll start streaming it again in the near future once I get all my cosmic gear in order and then we'll hit the city wall and we'll wait another month or two. <laughs> and we'll eventually get through this sometime in the summer. Anyway, thanks again for watching if you sat through all this. Uh, if you didn't, well, then you're missing out, man. Come on. <laughs> anyway, guys, y'all have a good night. Thanks again.